Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing another UCAT video and I am doing a quantitative reasoning subtest mock. And this is directly from the official UCAT website so it is completely free to use and it is the recommended resource. Now when I did my UCAT prep they literally just had a bank of like 200 um, UCAT like questions for quantitative reasoning but what they've actually done is that they've split them into lots of 36 so it um is the same as doing like a subtest mock. So that is really, really cool. And I will be taking us through the first one. Now, please do keep in mind that because I will be explaining my working and all of that, obviously it's gonna take me longer than the 25 minutes you do have. But in the real UCAT, you would be you would have 25 minutes to go through this. And I have just forgotten something. I've forgotten my calculator, so I have to run and get that. I am back. So typically you guys would have to use your UCAT calculator, but just because I am doing this in OneNote to annotate it, I actually um, can't use the UCAT calculator to show you guys how to do this. But um, that should be okay, and I reckon that we get started. So this first question here, voting estimates for a constituency 2016 and 2020. So our question is calculate the number of people who voted in 2016. So we would look at this and we would go, okay, so we've got 2016, people entitled to vote if they wish to do so. And then we've got our turnout percentage. So there are 81,651, that is really thick, people who can vote. And zero, um, there was a 67.6 .6 turnout, so we would multiply that by 67.6. Point six, and that would get us 81.651 times 0 0.767 and I'm doing this real time by the way I have done these questions a very long time ago but um yeah it was really really not that much so I got do, 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 for those people my answer was something that I am not liking the look of that's right because I put it in my calculator wrong there we go. So I ended up with 55,197.95.4. Now that is not looking like any of the answers. It is pretty close to C though. I am just trying to figure out why that is not similar to any of the actual answers. Come on. Voted in 2016. That's the people who can vote. And that is the people who came. Unless what we want to do is... Yep, okay, so I figured out my problem here. I did it... Um, using the turnout and although that is correct that is actually the rounded turnout which is why I got a slightly smaller answer but if you add up these numbers that I'm highlighting in blue here so basically um, what parties they voted for you get C as the answer as well so this is just um, very close just because this is a rounded percentage here so the answer is still C though so now let's move on and we've got the same question, same set. Calculate the number of people who died or moved outside the constituency between 2016 and 2020. So if we have 85,466 people in 2020, and these are the new voters, so we have a total difference. Let me just see. I am cannot read this. So I, to figure this out, I would do 85,466 subtract 13,299 because those are the new voters, which equals 85466 minus 13299. And then I get 7,267. So those are the returning voters. And because we started off with that many people, I would do... 81651 subtract 72167 
and that equals 1561 minus 72167 and then I get 9484 and yes B is the correct answer. Let's move on. Calculate the percentage of people who voted to so the turnout in 2020. So this is a super easy one. So the people who voted is 59528. And this is the total number of people who can vote. So we will do the division here. And then we would multiply by 100 to get our answer. 466 times 100 is 69.65%. So our answer for that one is E. What percentage of the votes car did votes cast did the Purple Party receive receive in 2020? So this is the total number of votes, and then this here is the Purple Party. So I have 25191 of people who voted in the Purple for the purple party. And then I've got the total number of votes here times 100. And honestly, you don't even need to do the times 100 because that is super easy to do in your head. And then that gets us 42.32%, which gives us D as the answer. So that's our first set done. Let's keep moving as quickly as we can. So this is all about podcasts. We've got the percentage of the length spat on advertisements and then we've got the length of the podcast how much longer is the length of adver advertisement time in a 28 minute podcast which is up here so that is 10 then a 24 minute podcast which is 10 so this is the percentage so both of them for 10 percent of the podcast it is ads so we can do this without even using our calculator Percentage of podcast links spent on advertisements. We've got 10. Do, 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 do. Just reading this. So what? Oh, sorry. The podcast link is in minutes. I was like, what is going on there? So that is 2.8. I'm sure you can see that I haven't done this in a while. So we've got 2.8 minutes is ads in the 28 minute one. Subtract the 2.4 min in the 24 minute one. And that gives us 0 0.4 minutes. And if we do 0 0.4 times by 60, we actually get 24 seconds, which may, gives us B as the answer. Let's keep moving. So this is the exact same set. The length of advertisement time in a podcast is 3.6 minutes. How long is the podcast? So 3.6 minutes, that's probably giving, I don't know, I would go with, it's probably, it's going to be, what we would need to do is we need to do 3.6 divided by 0.18 because we need to test each of these percentages out. That gives us 20 minutes. So we know it can't be below 15 minutes because the advertisement gives us something bigger than that 20 minute time. Let's do 3.6 divided by 0.10. That gives us 36 minutes. Again, that is larger than this one here. So let's go down to 8%. 3.6 divided by 0.08 equals 45 minutes. And this one does fit inside this category here. But let's just check that last one just to show you why it does not work. Um, yes, the answer here is D for 45 minutes, but let's keep going for the next one. So if it was 60 minutes plus, we've got 5% of ad time. 3.6 divided by 0.05 gives us 72 minutes. So what are we going to do here? 72 times 0 0.05 is 3.6. 45 times 0 0.08 is also 3.6. I am finding that both of these could be the answer, both 72 minutes and 45 minutes. The official answer is actually 45 minutes. I will move on for now just because I think we should keep going. The longest podcast is 75 minutes. Yeah, I will have a think about that one and come back. The answer is definitely D. Um, which is that first 40 minute, 45 minutes that we got, but actually both of these do work. 
So I find that very, very strange, but I will come back to that and see if I can figure out what is going on there. How much time is spent on advertising in a podcast that's 30 minutes long? Now we would come into this 30 minute category here. So we've got 0.08 for 8% multiplied by 30 equals 2.4 minutes, which means A is the answer there. Then for this last one, how much greater is the length of advertising in the longest podcast than the shortest podcast? So up in the context here, it says the shortest podcast is 12 minutes long and the longest is 75 minutes long. So if we have a podcast that is 12 minutes long, it falls into this category. So you've got 12 times 0.18 and that comes to 2.16 minutes. And then we will have 75 times this shortest one here, which is 0.05%. And that comes to 3.75 minutes. And what we would do is we would subtract those from each other. And then that comes to 1.59 minutes. So then we would tick A as the answer there. And let's keep moving. Now this one is a tax one. This is definitely what I would consider to be a trickier one. So Bill has an annual taxable income of this much. To the nearest dollar, how much tax does he have to pay? So for the first um, 8,000, oh, these are very tricky. The first 8,950, we need to pay $895. So we already know that that's how much he has to pay. And then 28,950 subtract that initial 8950 comes to only $20,000. So he needs to have $20,000 in the next tax bracket. And that does fall into this second one here. And he's only got $20,000 in there because we've already paid tax on the first 8950 So let's multiply that by the 15% tax rate and we get $3,000. So that means our total tax is going to be the addition of those two, which comes to $3,895, which makes the answer B. So that is the answer to that one. Now let's keep going. Corey has an annual taxable income of this much per month. She wants to save enough money each month to pay her tax for the year. The minimum amount to the nearest dollar Corey has to save each month is. So let's first of all figure out how much she earns per year. So we would multiply 2,500 by the number of months. So that is actually only $30,000. And we automatically know that for the first 8,950, she pays $895. So let's do 30,000, subtract 8,950, and that gives us 21,050 dollars left for the second tax bracket. So let's multiply 21,050 times by 0 0.15 for the next tax bracket. And that gives us 3,157 dollars and 50 cents. So let's add that to the 895 dollars and that gives us $4,052.50 and that is the total tax that she must pay for the year and now let's just divide it by 12 um, to figure out how much she needs to do per month. So she needs to save up $337.71 per month and that gives us the answer C because it says to the nearest dollar which rounds up to $3,000 3,000, pardon me, $338. Now, the reason that I have to find this number first, instead of just trying to figure out how much tax she needs to pay each month, is because this is her annual tax. This is not like they get taxed every year. So it goes on their yearly wage, not their monthly wage. Let's keep going. Omar has a taxable income of this much per year. What percentage of his taxable income does Omar pay in tax? So again, we know that he pays this $895 for the first chunk of that there. Then we would subtract this. 8950 And this gives us 
and 300 left over. Now this one is trying to trick us because we can see that he's got that much taxable, taxable income per year, which comes to the top of that tax bracket. But that tax bracket is not including what is already in here. So what we need to do here is multiply 2,700 and 300. I have a feeling that this is not necessary. 4095. And then we do 4095 plus 895, which is going to equal 4990. Now this is a trick and I actually nearly got tripped up by it just because I haven't done these in a long time. But this number here is actually the same as this number here. And that's because this barrier, this number, his taxable income is on the barrier, which means the maximum amount of money he can pay at the top of this income bracket is that. So you can do it separately or you can do it all together. You will get the same answer. I just wanted to show you doing it this way because this is the way you're gonna have to do it majority of the time when you get a taxable income that is not like on the bracket. But that is our total taxable income. Well, no, that's our total tax paid. So let's see um, what percentage he pays every year. Sorry, times by 100 equal to... Do, do, do. Oh, did the wrong thing there. Divided by 36250. And then that gets us our 13.77% which rounds up to correct to one decimal place, 13.8%, which gives C as the answer there. Let's see. Yep, we're all good. Let's keep moving. Uh, the values at the bottom and top ends are going to be increased by 10%. So let's see if it has changed yet. Yeah, no, this thing has actually not changed. So the top, like this table, unchanged, which means we're going to have to do the changes ourselves. So for a person with a taxable income of that, which you will notice was actually Omar's earnings, we know that that is 4,990. So this is the original, right? And we can see that in the table there and we can see it from our last thing. But now we need to calculate for when the top endpoints of each income tax bracket are going to be 10% increased by 10%. So the first value we need to increase is this 8,950. So to increase it by 10%, we would times it by 1.1, and that gives us 9845. So that means we need to pay 10% tax on that 9,845, which comes to $984.50 in that first tax bracket and then the rest of it can be paid at that regular 15% because we know it's not going to go over the top of that because if we have increased that tax bracket as well we know we're not going to reach that so let's go with the rest of our money so we started off with this much money and this is the new um, top tax bracket that we paid So now we've only got this much left over in that second tax bracket. So what we want to do is we want to times that by um, 0 0.15. And that gets us 3,960.75. So now let's add our total tax together. 984.50 plus 3,960 plus 75 equals... 4,945.25. But what we want to find is the change in income. So we need to subtract this original tax from that. So let's go. Oh, sorry. This is the difference in tax that we're paying. So originally our income is going to be... Sorry, I did not read that question properly. So originally, our total income that we take home before the tax change has been made will be 31260. And now, because we're now we're paying this extra tax, let's find out what our new income, take home income is going to be. 
and this is what we get 36350 minus 4945.25 and this is our new take home income so what we want to do is we want to subtract those two that does not feel right oh no no that actually is right there should be And what we actually get here, when we subtract, find the difference between those two, the difference is actually $407. And we actually take home more money with the new stuff. And that rounds up to $45. So we actually get an increase in $45 with these new tax bracket changes. Let me just correct, check I've got the correct answer. And yes, I do. So that one is a lot of working out, but it does come to C. Let's keep moving. So this is viewership of five programs on a weekday. What is the total number of audience who tuned into program three? So program three, let's look. Okay, so to find that, we've got a little calculation down here. Rating equals number of audience tuned in. Um, over audience population. So what we want to do here is let's rearrange this to get number of audience tuned in as the subject. So we would do rating divided by 100 multiplied by audience pop population equals number of audience tuned in. So now let's enter some values. So for program three, we have the rating at Do we have to do both of these? Do, 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 do. Yes, I believe we have to find all three of these. Okie dokie. So let's start off with the first one through the Cindy. So two is our rating over 100 multiplied by one, three, 500 equals 270. So now let's do others, which is 2.2 .2 as the rating. So 2.2 .2 over 100 times 13500 equals, oh, typed in the wrong thing there, is 297. So now we've got that from the networks, but we also need to look at this network and this cable. So in total, we want to add all four of these numbers. 567 from network, 594 from cable, 270 through the Cindy's and 297 through other. And the total comes to 1,728. So we can tick D as the answer. Approximately 24.8% of the audience who tuned in through the Cindy's for program two were females. What number of the audience were male? So what we're gonna do is, because in these ones we assume that there's only female and male, we do 100 minus 24.8, and that gives us 75.2%. So this percentage here is for males. Now let's do our um, exact same thing as before, our exact same rearranging. And that is when we get the ratings for the Cindy's on program two. So we do three over 100 multiplied by 9,400. Just putting it in my calculator. And that gives us 282 total. So now we need to find the mail. So we would multiply by that percentage that we found. And that gets us 212. So that gets us E as the answer. Let's keep moving. Okie dokie. If about 33% um, of the audience who tuned into program one through Cindy switched to program four through the Cindy's, what would be the number of the audience who tuned into program four through the Cindy's? So let's first of all find program one through the Cindy's. And it is, again, the exact same process. So program one, Cindy's, is 1.6 over 100 times by the base population. And that gives us 168 for program one. And we need to get a third of that. So I'm going to divide that by three. And now we've got 56 who are switching to program four. 
So now let's um, go and do the same for program four. We've got 3.6 over 100 multiplied by the base population equals 90. And now we can add 90 and 56 to get 146 and C as our answer. Let's keep moving. What is the difference in overall rating of that of program two and that of program one? So I would have a look and what we're going to have to do, I think, is find all four ratings and then of each program, add them together and then find the difference. So our rating for network of program one is going to be using this formula down here, 756 over 10,000. <laughs> So our rating for network one is 7.2 and then cable one is going to be 399 over 1051 times by 100. And that gets us 3.8. So the total of program one is going to be 7.2 plus 3.8 plus 1.6 plus 0 0.4, which equals... 13. So now let's do the same for program two. So let's have a look. We've got 611 over times by 100. Yep. And we've got 6.5. And then for cable, we've got 423 over 9400. And we've got 4.5, so our total for P2, program 2, will be 6.5 plus 4.5 plus 3 plus 1, which equals 15, which means our total difference is super easy that time, and it is just 2. 15 minus 13 is 2. So that makes E our answer. Let's keep moving. Okie dokie. Oh, I remember this question. Uh, do, do, do. What was the value of the display ad market in year one? So we're looking at year one. This is the mobile ad market. This is the percentage change in display ad. Let's have a look. And this is from the previous year. Okie dokie. In the year preceding year one, the value of the display ad market was 1.2 million. So let's have a look. In year one, it had percentage change is the circle. So it had a 250% change from 1.2 million. So this is the formula for percentage change. Percentage change equals final minus initial over initial. So we've got Oh, times by 100. So we've got 250 over 100 because we'll take that there. And we've got the final, which is going to be year one, minus the 1.2 million over year one. So this is a little bit tricky looking. So now we've got uh, 2.5 equals year one minus 1.2 over year one. Let's keep doing some maths here. We've got 2.5 year one. If we bring the year one over the other side equals year one minus 1.2. Then we can add, let's subtract that over the other side and make 1.5 year one equals negative 1.2. And then we would do year one equals 1.2 divided by 1.5. This is not sounding like we are going to get the correct answer here. What is the problem that we've got? Have I picked the right circle? 250% change. It doesn't say percentage increase. It does say percentage change. So what is going on here? Final minus initial divided by initial times by 100. Have I, did I divide that wrong? No, I did not. Hmm. I am trying to figure out what is going on. Let's check the answer. And this is what you should be doing in UCAB Web and Issue. So our thing should be E. Percentage change in millions of pounds. 
Yes, 250%. Unless we're just doing... No, that's not it. Why is this not working? Oh, I know exactly what I've done wrong. I accidentally put initial as year one. I should have had initial as 1.2. So forget about all of that maths there. I really do apologize for my mistake, but this just shows us that we all do make mistakes and we need to be on the ball in UCAT. And you should notice when you get an answer that doesn't make sense, like I just did there. So do 2.5 times 1.2 equals year one minus 1.2. So that's 3 equals year 1 minus 1 1.2. And that means we get 4.2 as year 1, which gets us E as the correct answer. What's the difference between the value of the display ad market in year 3 and year 2? So we found in our last question that year 1 was 4.2 million pounds, right? So now we need to find it in year two and in year three by using the exact same process, using our percentage change. So our percentage change in this case is 150. So we would do 1.5, which is 150 divided by 100 equals final minus initial over initial. So year two is gonna be our final. 4.2 is our initial, initial and 4.2 is also our initial. So what we want to do here is do 1.5 times 4.2 plus 4.2 equals year two. So let's see what year two is and see how it's really important um, because your answers do often rely on um, previous answers. So it's really important that we try to get them right. And now let's go and try year three. So we have our percentage change of 80, so that gets down to 0 0.8. Then we get year three minus 10.5 over 10.5. Exact same maths as down there will get us, plus two, 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 is going to get us 18.9 million. So let's find the difference between the display markets between year two and year um, three. Do, 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 equals 18.9 minus 10.5 and that gives us 8.4 million pounds which does give us d as the answer there so that one is correct let's keep moving what was the value of the mobile ad market in year three so let's have a look do, so that's the display ad market mobile ad market. So I'm guessing, what was the value of the mobile ad market in year three? Let me have a look. So we've got change in display ad market. So our display ad market in year three. So, oh, sorry, display ad market in year three was 18.9 million and now let me see what else we need to do what was the value of it okie dokie oh here we go here's the part of the mobile advertising market comprises of display search and sms ad format so now we need to figure out um what our percentage share of search and sms ads so we have 30 percent of it is sms ads which means 70 percent is display ads so what i'm going to do here is do 18.9 divided by 0 0.7 because that is um 70 percent of it of the total market which gives us 27 million which gives us c as the correct answer now that one is definitely a tricky one i do remember this question set and remember it being so terrible but that is what we want to be looking at there for that one um yeah i probably should um read the questions better it says this market comprises of the display which is the circle and then the sms and search ad formats which is the triangle and the important thing you need to note is that the axes are displaying completely different things. For the display ad, it's the change in value. And for the SMS and search ads, it's the total composition of the ad market. Okay, let's keep moving. There is another one of these questions. In year four, the mobile ad market comprised 28% of the total online ad market. What was the total 
what was the value of the online ad market in year four? So let's have a look at this. So in year three, we remember that it was 18.9 million. That was the, um, oh, no, sorry, that was the display ad. The mobile ad thing in year four, we just calculated it was 27 million and it was 28% total. So what is the total value of the market? We divide that by um, 0 0.28 and then we get not an answer that is on there. Let me check what is going on here. Mobile ad market consisted of 28% total. Oh, I know what I've done. I skipped a step. I went with the year three data. No, so the year three data, let's um, have a look at that. So this is gonna be a big step question. I did not realize this before, but let's get stuck into it. So in year three, the display ad market was 18.9 million. And let me just check I got that right. Yep. So what's it going to be in year four if we've got a 36% um, change? Let's have a look at that. So if we remember, we got 0 0.36. And this is from our percentage change formula. We've got year four minus 18.9 over 18.9. So let's find the year four um, display ad market as that. plus 18.9 and then we get 25 25.704 million so that is the display ad market in year four and if in year four 20 percent of it is the sms stuff that means 80 percent of it is the um not sms stuff the other stuff so let's keep going and we will do 25 over 7.0 7 7.704 divided by 0 0.8 and then what we get is 32.13 million for the mobile ad market total in year four then we need to keep going and find the total online ad market so we're going to divide that by 0 0.28 percent and we get 114.75 million pounds, which gives us answer D. So this um, set that we've just gone through would definitely be considered one of the more difficult sets, but let's keep going. Okie dokie, this diagram shows, oh, I remember this too, shows asset allocation um, recommended. The conservative investor is the middle one. The moderate um, investor is the, like, okay. This is confusing. Aggressive is the outside most ring. Conservative is the innermost ring. And then moderate is the middle ring. So let's have a look. The asset mo allocation for moderate and aggressive investors is shown for every $100 of respective investment. Okay, okay, let's look at this question. What is the angle subtended at the center for an investment in stocks for a moderate investor? So moderate is the middle one and stocks is um, counts for both international and um, domestic. So we would add the moderate. So here we've got 40 for domestic and 25 for the um, non-domestic which gives us 65 total for our asset allocation so i'm going to go with 65 so we would need to do so that's 65 percent so what we would want to do there is go with 360 degrees in a circle divide times by sorry 0 0.65 percent and that gets us 234 so the answer here is d let's keep moving okay so the total amount of money invested by a conservative investor was this figure here what is the difference in value of the assets allocated to bonds and the assets allocated to cash for this conservative investor so the conservative cash we haven't got a value for for the conservative bonds we have 216 degrees now this is super confusing because the outside ring is giving us a percentage and the inside ring is giving us a degree so we've got 216 degrees out of 360 and then the um 
pretty thing is we've actually only got three things. This conservative do not have international stock. So what we actually need to do is we can just subtract the domestic stock, which isn't included in there. So 360 degrees minus 72 comes to 288 degrees total. So that is the total number of degrees in this circle that is going to cash and bonds. Um, so then we can subtract 288 minus 216. And this gives us oh, another perfect 72 bonds. Okay, that is pretty good. And that is for the cash. And then we've got 216 for the bonds. So now let's look at what the bonds looks like. 216 over 360, that is our percentage multiplied by 23525 equals 14115. Now let's do the same, but let's do that for cash. 72 over 360, that is the um, total, um, that's the percentage there, times by 23525 is going to give us I typed it in my calculator wrong. Two, three, five, two. And that gives us 4705. So now, now let's find the difference between those two. 14115 minus 4705 equals 14115 minus 4705. And then that gives us $9,410. So we can tick C as the answer there. Let's keep moving. What is the mean value of asset allocation to cash um, for an 18,000 blah, 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 for moderate and aggressive investors? So we need to find the um, cash allocation for $18,200 for both of those investors and then find the mean. So aggressive cash is this small part here. So we would go with 100 minus 55 for domestic stocks, 30 for international stocks and 10 for bonds. So that gives us only 5% in cash for the aggressive investor. Now let's look at the moderate one and we have 100, subtract 25, subtract 25, subtract 40, which is gonna give us 10% for the moderate investor. So that is a 5% difference there because it's the same amount. All we need to do is find the difference between um, investments. So we've got a 5% difference in investment. So let's do 0 0.05 multiplied by 18200. And that gives us, oh, sorry, I was finding the difference. I don't know why I was doing the difference. I am so sorry. I should have been finding the average. Oh, I think I was thinking of this up here. So the average percentages is going to be 7.5%. And we can do that really easily because we're investing the same amount of money. So we can do that calculation super duper easily. And we multiply one th Oh, that should be a 2, times by 0 0.075, which gives us 1,365, which does give us B as the answer, which is correct. And let's move on to question 24. So after this, we'll be two-thirds of our way through this set. An aggressive investor is shown as a semicircle. What angle would be subtended by domestic stock? So semicircle is just going to be half. There is 180 degrees in a semicircle. So the domestic stocks for the aggressive um, is 55%. So 55% times by 180 gives us 99 degrees. So let's keep moving. Okie dokie. The table shows the number of daily downloads of three grocery delivery apps. One number is missing. The downloads of app on app one on day four is incorrectly written as 600. The ratio of the median number of downloads per day of app one with the correct number to the median number of downloads per day of app three is 39 to 40. So let's find the median of app three. To find the median, we need to find the middle number. So let's order them. Oh, I don't know why I went to it. Let's order them in ascending order. 800 and 10, 1000. So our median here is 800. 
So if we've got 39 to 40, and we need to do x is to 800, and x is going to find us the median. There we go. We need to do some math. So let's turn this into a fraction for ratio's sake. X over 800. So all we need to do to find the median of app, app 1 is this. So we would do 39 over 40 multiplied by 800 equals X. And that gives us 780. So the median is going to be 780. So let's see what we can do there. So let's go through our um, numbers. Okay, so we have 400 at the lowest, then we got 600, then we got seven. Oh no, 600 is the incorrect one, sorry. 750. And then we've got 800 and then we've got 1000. So 780 as a median falls somewhere in here, which means that our number actually needs to be bigger. And what we get here is when we get a 780 is going to be our middle number there. We have an odd amount of um, numbers. So it won't be, if you had an even amount of numbers, like one, two, three, three, four, you need to find the average between these two to get that median. But because we've got five numbers, we can see that 780 is going to fall in that middle there. So 780 is going to be our answer for the correct number of daily downloads. Let's keep moving. What is the mean number of downloads um, for app one for the five days as shown in the table? And we have to go back to assuming that the table is correct. So for the mean, we would just do 800 plus 1000 plus 750 plus 600 plus 400 all divided by five. And this is an example of an easy one that you can use to bank up your time. And then we get 710 there. So that gets us C as the correct answer. Let's keep going. When the number of downloads on, of app three on day six is included, the median number of download per day for six days is the same as the median number per day of five days. If the number of downloads on day six is included, which statement about the mean number of downloads per day is certain to be true? Okay, let's, let's, let's go with app three and write down our median thing again. Okie dokie. So this is our um, list of ascending order. I just had to fix that there. There we go. And the median is currently 800. And if we add the number of downloads for the sixth day in, it's not going to change. Now, remember what I said about if you have even numbers, you need to find the average. But if it doesn't, if it stays the same, then we know that the average is not going to um like the average is still going to be 800. And the only way that you can get an average of 800 in this situation is if that um, extra number, the day, the day six number is also 800. Because then to find the mean between these two days, it's just 800 plus 800 divided by two, which is 800. So we know that this is the median, but now we need to find the mean number of downloads. So we're going to add all of those numbers together and then divide by six. And if I divide by six, I get 675. And these um, are incorrect, D and E, just because they are um, talking about like what the actual mean is and none of them match that. And then our current, Let's see, let's find that is not greater than the median. So we can also rule out B. So now we need to find out if it's greater or less than the current mean. So what we want to do is find the mean of day five. So all we need to do is add these five together and divide by five. And then we get 650, which means that the correct answer is C as it is greater than the current mean. Let's keep moving. 
we got this question again. On day three, the ratio of number of downloads of app one to app two is three is two two. So we've got app one is 752x because we don't know the app two. And then we've got, and that is the same as three is to two. So let's do the same as before when we do 700 and actually I want X on top. X over 750 is gonna equal two over three. So then we can just do two over three times by 750. And that gets X as 500. So now we can put 500 in there. And the question is, what is the median number of downloads for app two? So now that we've got the 500, we can put it in order. And we can see that our middle number is 575. So our answer will be A. Okay, this is Herbert Hub, Hubert bought the same type of jackets every month from a UK store and sold them in the US. This is the cost per jacket each month. Du, du, du. Herbert bought a dozen jackets each month in January and February and sold them at a fixed US rate of $99 each. If one pound was equal to $1.50 during this period, what was his profit in January and February? So if he bought 24 jackets in total, but this is our cost in pounds. So we've got 12 times 62, which is January, plus 12 times 64, which is February we get he spent a total of that i'm sorry that was the worst pound symbol i've ever drawn we've got 1512 pounds so now we can change this into dollars so we'll times it by 1.5 and that gets us 200 2068 Dollars. So that's how much he bought them for. And now let's multiply the 24 times by the $99 because that's how much he sold them for. And we get $2,376. So if we find the difference between these two, we get $108. And now to get it back into pounds, we need to, instead of timesing by 1.5, we need to divide it by 1.5, which gives us 72 pounds, which means the answer is going to be D. Now let's keep moving. We are almost there. Don't worry. I need to stop for a drink. It's so hard to do all of this explaining. Okay, this is the number of cycle trips male and females in different age groups went on in a year. Based on the data, a student figured out that the number of males who went on cycle trips was close to five times the number. Which of the following age group best reflects this conclusion? So we need um, the men having five times, like, like cycling five times the amount as women do. So let's have a look. Okay, so we know that five to ten... Oh, they've given us weird age groups. So let's first test out 5 to 16. So the males is going to be the 12 plus 45. So that's 57. And the females will be 11 plus 11, which is 22. That is not going to be close to five times. Okay, let's look at 11 to 20. So the male is going to be 45 plus 31 which is 76, and the female is going to be 16. Okay, this could be it. So if we do 76 over 16, we get 4.75, but we probably could do better than that, so let's keep checking. Let's do 39, 30 to 49, which will be these two. And we've got 26 plus 29 for the males, which gives us 55 and then the females gives us 20 as the 10 plus 10 that's not going to be the answer that's not close to five times then if we do 50 to 59 that is just the 20 and the 10 which we can see is double so we can cross that out and then 60 plus is 11 and 4 which is again closer to double or three times so that means that we know that b is going to be our answer here it's the only one that is anywhere near close to five times Okay, this is another standalone. This is the annual subscription versus the daily rates. Now, this is the money saved in the annual subscription, not how much the subscription costs. What is the difference between the annual subscriptions of the two newspapers that cost the least on the daily basis? So the least on a daily basis is going to be C and B. 
and the annual subscription. So what we need to do, if we buy 365 papers of B, we get $383.25. And if we save $75 in the, the like the um, annual subscription, then we know that for B, the annual subscription is going to be $308.25. Now, if we buy the $0.99 cents, um, for paper C, we're going to get $361.35. And if we subtract the $35 that we save, our annual subscription for C is going to be $326.35. And now we can find the difference between those two just by subtracting them from each other. And we get 18.1. So that makes E the answer for us. Let's keep moving. Jamie wants to create a cubicle lid for a gift box as shown in the figure. What is the total area of cardboard pieces required to make the lid? So we need one piece there and then four side pieces. So the top piece will be eight times six is 48. And then we're going to have um, one times by six times by two because there's two sides of it here and here which equals 12, and then we will have the eight times one times two, which is gonna be the 16, which means we know that that will add up to 76 square inches, giving us D as the answer. Okay, this table shows the cost of renting different types of motorboats for certain hours. Okay, let's find. If the deposit for type D increased by 5% on Sundays, what is the total cost of type D for six hours on a Sunday? So type D, the deposit is, I'm guessing this is, oh no, we got cost per hour here. Okie dokie. So we have, $95 times by 1.5%, 1.05 to find that extra 5% for the deposit, which gives us $99.75. And then the cost per hour is the 600. So we just need to add the 600 on top of that and we get B as the answer there. Let's keep moving. Okie dokie, Martha's total cost of renting type C was $325. For how many hours did she rent the motorboat? So let's do $325 minus the $100 deposit. So that is $225 and divide that by the cost per hour and we get oh, three hours. So the answer there is going to be C. Let's keep moving, we're almost done. The total cost of renting a type E motorboat is that much for one hour. Type C and E have the same deposit. What is the ratio of the cost per hour of a type C to a type E? Okie dokie. So let's have a look at this. Okay, total cost for one hour. So... They have the same deposit, so the type E deposit is also going to be $100, which means the cost per hour was $140. Now, the cost per hour here is $75, so we want to have a ratio of C, 75, to the ratio of E. So those are our cost per hours. Let's divide both of them by 5, just to see if we can simplify it, and we get 15 to 28, which gives us C as the correct answer. Actually, did I mess that up there? C is to E. Oh, I just ticked the wrong one, that's all, because I had B written down as my answer. Great, B is the answer there. Our very lucky last question. Alan rented type A motorboat for three hours on Monday and a type C for two hours on Tuesday. What was the percentage change in his cost? So A for three hours, there's no deposit. It's just $25 per hour. So that gives us $75 for A. And then for C, we get the 100 plus two times $75 per hour which gives us $250. Our percentage change is gonna be 250 minus 75 divided by 75 multiplied by 100, which gives us, whoa, T 
Did I do that correctly? Mm. Oh, wait. I missed out on the deposit for that one. My bad. It says some information is missing. Let me just start that again for you guys. I just assumed there wasn't a deposit. See, that's why we need to read the question. But when you answer the question, you find that there is no answer that matches it. That's usually when it tells you you've done something wrong. So if we've got $135 for two hours and the cost per hour is $25, then we know that the deposit for A is going to be $85. So then we could do the 85 plus the 75 we calculated before, which gives us $160. And then what we calculated before was the $250 on the Tuesday. So now let's do 250 minus 160 over 160. And that gets us... Fifty six point two five percent. So that is the answer for C. So that is our subtest mock done. Took us way longer than the real thing, but that's because I was talking it out and writing notes and all that. And that's not what I did in the real UCAT. Um, I hope that helped you out and thank you so much for watching.